Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. Now, in this part of the Absolute Beginner Guide, in this uh, section of the Absolute Beginner Guide, we're learning how to use Transex. Now, I'm assuming that you're going to watch all these videos in order, but uh, at the very least, you will, if you're coming to my channel for the first time here, if you happen to be finding this video for some reason for the first time, I would recommend at the very least that you go back uh, several videos and watch all the Transex videos in order because uh, you, starting from the middle obviously it's not going to make any sense. This video is a direct continuation of the last video so if you're just finding this one here it's you're not going to make heads or tails of anything. So let me go ahead and switch uh, camera views here. In the last video we got our plan finalized for going out to the moon. We left Earth and we're now at the point where we need to do some kind of mid-course correction. And let's actually just uh, reset everything here and go through it from scratch So, because, because this is a different video. All right. Now, we, uh, the, in order to do a maneuver, we need to turn maneuver mode on. And at the, in the other video, in the last video, we found out that if we put in 28 meters per second of prograde velocity at the point that we're at right now, then that will bring our minimum altitude down to a number that we like, and it will bring our off-plane distance down to a, a really low figure. I don't remember what it was, but it was low. The question is, and we also found that if we used, instead of using prograde, we found that if we use just outward, that we don't get a solution that is, makes any sense, and it would cost a lot more to get it, and it wouldn't make any sense to use it anyway. And it was the same thing with prograde. If we use prograde by itself, then we don't have a valid solution and it costs a lot to do it anyway. But sometimes it's better to use a combination of variables. So instead of using just prograde, it might be better to use prograde and plane change, or it might be better to use prograde and outward, or it might be better to use prograde and outward and plane change. We just don't know until we try until we tinker with the uh, maneuver and start setting it up. So let's start with our prograde variable. Let's put in uh, some prograde because we know that prograde was helping. And let's go to 10. Let's say 10 meters per second. And that's kind of brought our numbers down a little bit. Now let's look at, let me also reset the time. Now let's look at the outward and see, because outward was helping, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't as efficient as, as prograde was. So let's see if by using a little bit of prograde and a little bit of outward, if we can solve this problem a little bit more efficiently. And you'll notice here, something I want to point out too, you can't just add numbers together. See, we have, here we have negative 10 outward, and over here we have 10 prograde. So you might think 10 plus 10 is 20 meters per second overall, but that's not how it works. If you press VW, you can see the total cost. The total cost is actually 14.4. That's why using a combination of variables can, can often help give you an overall lower delta V cost. And I'm not going to get into the equation. I believe it's the Pythagorean theorem, I think, is how those numbers are calculated. It's, uh, it's 10, it's, it's, uh, well, it's basically prograde squared plus outward squared plus plane change squared, and then you get the square root of that. And that's how you that's how you calculate the total delta v. So it's not it's not as simple as saying that we've got 10 meters per second of prograde and 10 meters a second of plane change and 10 meters a second of outward. Therefore, it's 30 meters per second. It doesn't work that way. So again, back to the uh, maneuver. And uh, so we added in negative 10 on the outward. And let's. Uh, just kind of bring that down and let's look at our total cost. It's up to 28, so it's not really looking too good in this case. So let's go ahead and reset outward and let's see if maybe plane, uh, prograde plus plane change, maybe that'll help or maybe that'll give us a lower overall cost. So adding in some plane change, that's bringing down the altitude a bit. So let's continue doing that. It's raising the off-plane distance, but I'm okay with that for now. Let's go back to the prograde, add in some prograde, and uh, something uh, around here, although 
the uh, off plane's a bit high still. Let's so let's see if we can bring that down a bit more. Oops, going the wrong way with that. Actually, I guess I was going the wrong way with the plane change the whole time. So clearly, plane change just has a ton of effect on the on the off plane distance. Okay, let's look at our total cost overall. We're at 26. Back to the prograde. Yeah, okay, I can I can tell by fiddling around here that that uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna get a better solution by using a combination of variables. In this case, using prograde only is what we want to do. So let's go back to the plane change variable and go to reset and reset it. But the point here that the point here that I want to make is that you don't just want to assume that. Uh, when you when you put in your when you put in your velocity, and you have what you want to see over here, don't assume that you have the best solution until you try everything. I've had I've had flights back a long time ago, where you know I didn't understand all this stuff very well, and I would just go to a variable and I would pick one at random, say outward, and I would get I would get everything set where I needed it to be set with outward, or maybe I would use outward and plane change. And then I would burn the maneuver, but I would be burning like a thousand meters per second. And then I would go back later and look at that flight. And I'm like, wow, I could have done the same thing with just 30 meters a second of prograde. So it, you can be you can be very wasteful with your delta V with your mid course corrections if you don't try different solutions. So again, just because you see that uh, 28 is working, it's giving you what you want for your you know, for your mid-course correction. Uh, you can burn it if you want, but it helps to reset it and then try other solutions and see how it goes. And in, in that case, uh, when, we, when we look at IMFD here in the Absolute Beginner Guide, I think you'll appreciate some of what it does for you because you don't have, there's not as much guesswork going on. All right, so we're, we're fine with this maneuver, so we're gonna go ahead and burn this maneuver. Let's press VW to get over to target. Now you'll note that the time to begin the burn was 285 seconds ago. We could burn the maneuver anyway if we want. We could uh, turn auto center on and wait for it to settle. When you do mid-course corrections like this and you're halfway in between bodies, the, the timing of the burn isn't critical. It down, you know, down to the second or two seconds, it, it just isn't that critical. So you could go ahead and do the burn even though it says that we were supposed to do the burn five minutes ago. But what you can also do, and you might prefer this just for your own like peace of mind, is go ahead and turn auto center off and then go back to the maneuver. And if you go to the date variable and reset it, that will set the date to right now this very second. Then you can go down to the uh, hyper setting and let's move this forward by, by 50. So instead of 7154, we're going to have it say uh, 7204. So let's do that. And what that does is it just gives us a little bit of time to, uh, to get the vehicle in position and everything. And in this case, it'll be like three and a half minutes, which is more time than we really need. And then press VW to get back over to view target. And now you can see that it says, well, let's begin the burn in 400 seconds instead of, you know, we should have done the burn 400 seconds ago. And by doing it that way, uh, you can have, you know, a little bit of peace of mind. Now let's warp time four, get a little bit closer to the time to begin the burn. To the time to begin the burn. Remember, we need maybe 60 to 120 seconds for Auto Center to do its thing. Since we are already almost in position, we probably only need about 60 seconds. So let's warp time four and get to that point. Okay, there we are. We overshot a little bit. 60 seconds. Turn Auto Center on. And again, let's take advantage of our tools. Let's bring up burn time calculator and have it get the maneuver from Transex. So get, and now it's going to do the burn. Uh, it's, it says it's only gonna do 24 meters per second, but again, that's just the way this works. And that's actually okay, because once the maneuver, once burn time calculator is done, we'll just use linear translation to finalize everything. All right, let me warp time forward to get through the uh, little bit here. There we are, back to real time. And that's the burn complete. 
and I'm going to say this and it might irritate you, but make sure you turn auto center off as soon as the burn is done. Never forget to do that. And the first time you forget to do it, you're going to, you're going to understand why I, why I emphasize this point so much. Trust me. Now we're going to bring uh, transex back up on this side so we can see the encounter. Now we're going to bring maneuver mode back up on this side and turn maneuver mode off. And now we need to finalize the maneuver with a little bit of linear translation. Because you'll note that since we still had a few meters per second left to burn, the minimum altitude is a little bit higher and the off-plane distance is a little bit farther off than what it was originally. But we can finalize that with just a little bit of forward translation. And we're just going to go forward until... We can even use a little bit of main engine burn control plus, but don't press the plus key and hold it. But we're just going to do a little bit of forward uh, movement there. And we'll just bring the off plane down to zero because that's got the minimum altitude uh, as low as that will get. Now that's going to be it for that mid course correction. And unfortunately, we'll probably need another one. So let's bring orbit MFD back up on this side. And let's reference the moon. Now this time we will wait until we are within the strong SOI of the moon. So let's go ahead and warp time forward at uh, 1,000. Let's go to 10,000. And we won't be in the strong SOI of the moon until the gravitational influence here says 0 0.40. But notice as we're going forward, things are changing over here. But they're not changing by nearly as much as they did on the first part of the trip. Continue going forward. Uh, it's tempting to kind of stop every few minutes and redo and kind of set up another maneuver, but it's just not a good idea to do it that often. So first maneuver uh, when using transex, first maneuver, first mid-course correction when you get outside of the influence of Earth's strong SOI, second mid-course correction when you get within the moon's strong SOI, and that'll be when this is 0.40. So warping time forward to 1,000, let's go to 10,000. Just be careful when you get to 10,000 because it's really easy to overshoot. Okay, there we are. Now we're within the strong SOI of the moon, and you can see that our HUD updated, if I remember correctly, in the uh, last video when we got to this point, for whatever reason, our HUD did not update. Okay, so uh, again, I like to be prograde. I just, I feel more comfortable when I'm prograde. <laughs> See where I'm going, and I've got the vessel oriented in some position that makes sense. So let's get the vessel set to prograde. Okay, we're done there. And off. Now, here we can do another maneuver. We can bring up Transex. And, you know, we can go through the whole process of setting a maneuver up, but we can also use our orbital knowledge. You know, we, we should be pretty good orbitots by now, or we should be reasonable. We're absolute beginners, but we should be reasonably proficient at understanding the very, very basic concepts. So we can turn maneuver mode on and go through the process, but we, when, what we know from past experience that if all we need to do is to change our minimum altitude down to a, a lower number at this point, because we don't want to arrive at the moon that high, we can do an inward burn or an outward burn, depending on if the, if the minimum altitude is positive or negative. In this case, it's positive, so we would need to do an inward burn. We would need to burn toward the moon in order to bring this down. And for the off-plane change here, uh, we would just need to do a linear trans, um, not linear, but we would need to do an up-down translation in order to change the off-plane distance closer to zero. Now, so in other words, rotation. we could do this. We could rotate the vessel minus 90, which would be 270 degrees to this position. And again, let me show what that looks like so you can understand. We are burning in toward the center of the orbit, or in toward the moon, so that's an inward burn. And doing that will bring the minimum altitude down. Once we did that, we could then uh, do up-down burns, so we could either go to the orbit plus or orbit minus position in order to bring the off-plane distance to zero. We can do that in two steps. It's a little bit more efficient if you combine those burns into one. So we could, that would actually 
so we could actually set up a maneuver so that we could help combine those into one. A as humans, it's, it's easier for us to think about things as step one, step two, step three, but it's not always the most efficient to do things to do this and then do that. Sometimes if we do two things together at the same time, we have a, a, an overall more efficient task. So let's turn maneuver mode on. And one thing we can do here also with the date, so we, kn we know that when we turn maneuver mode on, it sets the date to right now, and that date is expired immediately. If we go to view, uh, I guess we can't view target until we turn, until we actually put in some program. So let's start by setting the date forward by uh, 5 0. So it's instead of 0, 7, 8, 5, we're going to set that to 0, 8, 2, 5, which would be 50 greater than that number. And the reason I say that is because that gives us like three and a half minutes to set this up. Uh, if you want to go forward a little bit farther, you could go to 0, 8, 8, 5, which is 100 more than that. And that gives you, I think, 14 minutes. So actually, let me check real quick. It's been a while since I've actually done it that way. So let's go to 0825. Yeah, and I believe that gives you about 14 minutes. Let me just check something really quick. I accidentally turned maneuver mode off, so I reset it. Actually, be 0893 at this point because we're here. So a hundred more than whatever you see up there. And then let me just see how much time that is. I think that's 14 minutes. I just need to see, I need to see it on the view target. So that's 840 seconds. Uh, yeah, that's like 14 minutes. Okay, so that's one way. Uh, again, 14 minutes might be a little bit more time than you really need. So what you can do is instead of, instead of adding a hundred to that number, add 50 to it. So instead of 0, 0798, we would have 0, 0848. And that'll give us that'll give us seven minutes to set it up, I believe. So 0848, let's just warp time, or not warp time four, but rather set the maneuver date to 0848. And now that should give us uh, seven minutes to set up this maneuver. So Again, now, in, th in this case, we it's not a guessing game. We don't have to guess which variables are going to work for us. We know for sure. We know that we need to do an inward burn, so that's going to be... Uh, inward is the opposite of outward. So instead of positive outward, we, we, we need negative outward, and negative outward is, is inward. So if I press uh, minus minus, you can see the uh, the minimum altitude coming down. Notice it's not having much effect. Well, it's not having any effect on the off-plane distance because we also need to do uh, some. We also need to do some off-plane, uh, some plane change. So we want our minimum altitude again to be about 20 kilometers, but we don't know exactly. We're still far enough away from the moon that this number isn't going to be that accurate. So probably a better figure is maybe 35 kilometers, and then it, it may go up, it may go down. We don't know, but we'll adjust it later. Now we need plane change, and we know it's plane change because it's off plane distance. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be positive or negative. It should be positive. No, it's actually going to be negative. So we're going to put in enough negative plane change to bring the off plane distance close to zero. Notice it does have some impact on our minimum altitude, but it's not significant. So go ahead and set that. We'll, we'll set it to zero. Again, we don't know if uh, this isn't going to hold all the way to the moon. So when we get when we get all the way to the moon, we're going to have a little bit more correction to make. If we knew for sure if this was trending upward or down, we could um, we could compensate for it. For example, uh, if we knew it was trending upward, we could put it into the negative on purpose, and then we get, as we got closer to the moon, this would get closer to zero. But we don't know, and it, it's not going to be a big deal. So we're just going to set it to zero or close to zero. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go, you know, three, zero, whatever. Now we're going to view over to the target view. And since we, uh, since we started by setting the date, to, uh, the time, I should say, a little bit out into the future, we now have the begin burn showing that it's going to do the maneuver in uh, 270 seconds instead of 
instead of being in the past. Now, as before, go to go to uh, the auto center, and we don't need to worry about auto center until we are, you know, I'd say 120 seconds at the most. But since we can see that the X is almost here already, we can just go to 60 seconds. Okay, we're pretty close. Back to real time. Turn on auto center to give it time to do its job. And again, we'll bring up burn time calculator on this time. We'll get the maneuver from TransX and we'll let a burn time calculator carry out the burn knowing that it's going to stop a bit sooner and we'll have to do a little bit of linear translation to fine tune things. Let's warp time forward. You do want to be careful with time warp when you have auto center turned on. Uh, it can throw off the autopilot so if you're going to, if you're way out of position, then um, if you're way out of position, make sure that you leave 120 or maybe even 180 seconds. It really depends to give auto center time to do its job. But anyway, once the burn's done, what's the first thing we do? Turn auto center off. Very important. Don't ever forget that. Now come over to view the uh, maneuver and turn maneuver mode off. Now, bring up TransX on this side, and we can see how our burn worked out, showing our current minimum altitude is 106, and our off-plane distance is negative 3. But again, remember that we have to fine-tune the burn a little bit. So with a little bit of forward translation, we're going to uh, bring that minimum altitude all the way down to uh, the number that we chose, which was 35 kilometers. And it looks like we can even just do a touch of main engine burn, so Control plus that would just make things happen a little faster. And there we go. Well, now we've got the minimum altitude at 35, and our off-plane distance is showing negative 1. That's fine. Okay, now let's bring up Orbit MFD real quick just to see how far away we are from lunar periapsis. And again, I really like to be in the prograde position. It just makes me feel good. So let's get to the prograde position. And I'm going to say that that is basically it for uh, for this explanation of how to do an off-plane transfer. I'll go ahead and continue a little bit more, but there's really nothing else that there's nothing else that changes at this point. Uh, at this point, we're just going to set up a maneuver so that we can do so that we know when to do our braking burn at the moon. But otherwise, ever you know, we we already did that in the last video, so this is just going to be a repeat. So now we're we're done with new information. But be, since we're only at 22 minutes, we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and set up the braking burn so we can show how to do that again. Now uh, you can set up the uh, braking burn now, but and I did that in the last video. I think that was actually a little bit of a mistake. I think it's much better uh, instead of instead of setting it up this far out, warp time forward until you're much closer to the moon before you worry about setting up that maneuver. So actually, let me come out of time warp here and kill rotation. So when, because when you set up the maneuver, when you're that far away, you basically, you have to refine it so much when you get in close that it just doesn't do any good. So when you're, let's say 2000 seconds away from periapsis, this would be a good time. That's good enough there. Now we're going to set up that maneuver that we did in the other video. And let's go, let's just do it again, because it's always good to see things done uh, several times. And the way we do that is by turning maneuver mode on. And then we need to, uh, and something I always like to do here, I don't like this view where it shows us kind of coming into the moon at the sideways angle. So I like to go to view setup and change over to graph projection and change that either to focus or yeah, in this case, focus is the only one that works. And I just like this view better. It's not absolutely necessary to do that. Uh, maneuver mode's on, and then we're going to go to the date variable and remember date isn't necessarily days weeks months it's it can also time so in this case think of it as maneuver time and we don't want to do the maneuver right now we want to do the maneuver when we get to or when we get to lunar periapsis lunar periapsis is given to us right here PEMJD is 56718-3285 so we want to move the maneuver time up to that number 
three two eight five. And we're close to that point. Let's go down to hyper. And I overshot a little bit. Let's go to micro. And now we've got it at 3285. So this is when we're going to do the burn. And we know that the burn that we're going to do is to uh, lower the other side of our orbit. And how do we lower our orbit? We go to the, uh, we, we face against the direction of flight and we do a prograde burn. In other words, we're going to put in negative prograde. So let's put in as much negative prograde as is necessary to get the out to get the uh, to get the orbit shaped how we want. And we note notice that it's kind of hard to see exactly how things look when you have this particular view. So it also helps if we go into view setup and we go to the scale to view and we change it from all to target. Now you have kind of a zoomed in view of the moon and you can see better what's going on. Then we can go back to view maneuver and now we can dial in exactly how much prograde we need. Uh, we're pretty close here, so let's go down to a fine setting so we don't put in too much. But we can see as we come in to the moon here and we go out around, we're coming out on this side quite a bit higher. You can see obviously that this is much closer in than that. Um, we don't have to just use our eyeballs though to judge distances. We can look at the hypothetical uh, PED. It's currently 1784. And you'll notice as I as I add in a bunch of prograde, um, you'll see that number doesn't really change, even though we're way out there. But as I take away prograde, you'll see that number start to come down. And if we want a if we want an altitude at the moon of about 20 kilometers, then what we want is a hypothetical PED of about 1758, which is uh, 20 more than that number. So let's go down to a finer setting yet. Finer setting yet. Uh, it didn't take away quite enough. And there we have 1758. So we're saying when we get to uh, lunar periapsis here, we're going to do a we're going to do a retrograde burn, and we're going to burn until our periapsis is down to uh, 1,758 kilometers above the center of the moon, which puts us at an altitude, an orbital altitude of 20 kilometers above the surface of the moon. Now let's view over to target, and we're still 1,600 seconds away from the time to do the burn. That's enough time that there could be some, ina some inaccuracy in our setup. So what I like to do, and what I recommend everyone does, Warp time forward till you're closer to the time to do the maneuver. Get down to at least 600 seconds, but maybe even 500 or 300. Actually, I prefer 300. And then go back to real time and view back over to the uh, maneuver and go to that update and click update and see if anything changed significantly. And in this case, nothing did. Our hypothetical PED is still showing uh, 1758 and the PEMJD is still showing 3285 and that's when we're saying that we're going to do the burn. Sometimes what will happen uh, again if you warp time forward by 10,000 seconds like we did in the other example or if you warp time forward by 20,000 seconds there will be some changes that will occur and then uh, when you go to do the maneuver it's actually doing it at the wrong time. So it helps significantly it's I would just say it's a requirement to get within 300 seconds of doing the burn and do an update. And then if anything has changed, quickly go through your other variables and you should just have to do minor adjustments on the prograde or minor adjustments on the time, the maneuver date time, in order to get everything set back up how you want. Now, let's uh, coming up really close to 30 minutes, but let's go ahead and do this burn. Then we'll call it the end of this video and that will be the end of the explanation for the off-plane transfer. Notice that I'm very far out of orientation, so I'm going to give myself a full 95 seconds or so for Auto Center to do its job. Because you can see the vessel spinning way around. It's not, if the X were like right there, then I would only need, you know, that, you know, 20, 30, 40 seconds. But in this case, we're very, very far out of alignment. So I'm giving myself a full, you know, 90 seconds to let the Auto Center do its job. Now again, let's uh, take advantage of our tools. Let's bring up burn time calculator. 
Let's get the maneuver from Transex. And let's warp time forward just to get closer to the time to begin the burn. Be a little careful with time warp when you have auto center on. Weird things can happen. And let's just keep time warp on to get through the burn faster. And come back to real time. And now uh, turn maneuver, or turn auto center off, very important. Go to the maneuver view, turn maneuver mode off. And if necessary, uh, you can do any additional corrections that you need to do with linear translation in order to get your PEA set exactly where you want. We said that our target was uh, we said that our target was 20, and we're showing 26. So let's turn on the retrograde autopilot and put in just a little bit more linear translation to bring our PEA down to the target, which is 20 kilometers. And there we have it. Now, of course, to fix our pair, uh, to fix our apoapsis, we would have to be all the way over at the uh, periapsis position in order to bring that down. But we're not going to do that. Before we end this video, let's take a quick look at how we are in relation to Brighton Beach. You can see here that we are uh, 2,000, uh, coming up on 3,000 kilometers away from Brighton Beach, but we are perfectly in plane with Brighton Beach. And if we look at our other tool that we learned how to use in one of the previous videos, which is Base Sync, bring up Base Sync and we'll target Brighton Beach. We can see that on this orbit, the, the one that we're on right now, we're going to pass just two kilometers away from Brighton Beach. And we know that we can uh, correct that by doing just a little bit of up-down translation in order to bring that number all the way down to zero. And from there, we can land. And that will be it. So hopefully you now have some appreciation or some understanding of how to use Transex to get to the moon. And you also understand how to use Transex to get to the moon in a more efficient way than you would do with just using transfer MFD. And you don't have to do that really expensive plane change at Earth, or it can be expensive. So at some, at some, on some years, the moon is actually at a, uh, at a point where it actually passes really close, the, its orbital plane passes really close to KSC, and you actually don't have a very expensive plane change. But nevertheless, this way that we did it here, with the off-plane transfer is the preferred method is the preferred method it's always going to be cheaper so um, hopefully you understand how that works now we're definitely not done with transex by any stretch of the imagination there's a whole lot more to know and i don't know if we'll do another trip from the earth to the moon i'll have to think about that or if we're now ready to go from moon to earth um, in between videos i'll think if there's anything more that I want to talk about for the Earth to the Moon trip, but I think we covered it all. We've covered the off-plane transfer, and we also covered, you know, getting aligned with the base and starting to think about that all the way back at Earth. If you like this part of the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the don't like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Check for links in the description down below, and I will see you in the next video.